Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Today, we are delivering the punchiest bass drum known to man. Well, maybe not the punchiest in the whole universe, but about as punchy as we could possibly imagine getting it. We are gonna also reverse engineer this for you today to demonstrate that not only is this a great sound, but everything we found along the way in this exploration was also usable, interesting, rad, with one tuning, no extra shenanigans. We're gonna move from a completely wide open bass drum to our final sound with each change documented incrementally along the way so that we can compare them and understand exactly what's happening with each variable. The final recipe is gonna be ported front head, full batter head, pillow inside touching both heads. We're gonna put a wooden beater on the bass drum pedal and we're also gonna add a quarter gaff taped to the strike zone on the batter head to add that click on top of all of that. For the Rezo today, we have an Evans EQ3 ported white coated Rezo and we're using a clear EQ3 batter. Additionally, we're gonna mic the bass drum with two mics, which we never do here, but really helps to dial in this sound. We're gonna be doing a D112 inside almost all the way up to the batter head so that we're just picking up the strike only and very little else. And then we're gonna be using a condenser on the outside to gather up all the boom and thump that we want and then blend them together. Don't forget to stay with us all the way to the end where we're gonna display a back-to-back -back comparison of all of the sounds and additionally, a comparison between the internal and external mics so you can hear exactly what they're hearing. First off, we gotta figure out how we're gonna tune this drum today. The short answer is finger tight on both heads. Not really even concerning ourselves with the pitch. I'm just getting them as tight as I can with my fingers, no drum keys at all. Let's hear how this sounds. I'd like to take a quick moment to say that if you've ever gotten inspiration from our videos or saved a little bit of money in the process or learned something that you didn't know before, please follow the link below to the Patreon and help us continue to make this series. It's the best way to directly affect our capacity to do this. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of planning, and we want to keep it going. So please join the community, follow the link below, see if there is an option that's right for you, and moving on. At this point, again, there's nothing inside of the bass drum at all. There's no muffling added so far in any way. And also, we'd like to show you exactly what each of the heads sounds like individually in addition to this overall sound. As you can hear, the batter sounds very low and the Rezo has a surprising amount of pitch considering that it has a large hole cut in it. Oftentimes people think that having that hole in there is completely taking the resonance of that Rezo head out of the equation and that couldn't be further from the truth. Next up, we're gonna add the pillow, but before we really press it against both of the heads, we're gonna try laying it long ways along the inside of the drum to where it's barely touching each of the heads. This is actually pretty close to how I set up my bass drum for live pop and rock gigs because I like to play off of the batter head and I like to have some tone in there, but still with the overtones controlled a little bit. Now let's spin the pillow as it's gonna be for our final sound.
Now we are in a much drier, much punchier, and much shorter sound overall from this drum. It's important to also mention at this point that, again, there is no EQ, compression, or anything happening with this. This is raw sound only. Now we want to add a little more attack to this sound, so we're going to swap out the traditional felt beater for a wooden Danmar. In addition to adding a little bit of attack to the sound, this also changes the feel. This beater doesn't have the rebound that a felt beater does by virtue of the material, so it feels more powerful. It feels a little more like a stick, really, than a bass drum beater. This can be super fun for fast passages or anything where you want to have a similar kind of behavior and attack from the bass drum as you do from the rest of the kit that you're also hitting with wooden sticks. Finally, the last step in this, if this isn't quite enough attack for us, we're gonna add a quarter gaff taped to the exact strike zone on the batter head. When I'm making a patch for this purpose, I like to make it off of the drum so that I have the whole thing done and really dialed in before I put it on there. The way I like to do it is take a piece of gaff tape square and place a quarter on the non-adhesive side and take another piece of gaff tape and put it over that so that I'm making a sandwich where the bottom is sticky and the top is not. Then we take a couple more larger pieces of gaff tape and put an X on there so that we have a lot of surface area of adhesive to make sure that it doesn't come off while we're playing. Lastly, I hold this in front of the batter head and press on the pedal so that I can see exactly where the beater is going to hit on the patch and use that to set it onto the head and then press all of that tape down. The alignment of the coin to the beater is the most important aspect of this, so make sure that you're being very meticulous about this because if you're striking the edge of the coin or not the coin at all, you're gonna get either a bad result or possibly go straight through that head really, really fast. Before we talk about what this is getting us anymore, let's hear how it sounds. Wow, that's a big jump in attack and presence, especially in the upper register. And this is exactly what we're looking for here. It sounds almost like a pre-made sample of a processed bass drum, which is crazy, because again, at this point, there's no processing here. This is still all acoustic, totally dry sounds. Now you might have said to yourself when we switched to the wooden beater on a clear batter head tuned this low that surely this is the maximum amount of attack we can get out of this drum. But adding this coin, it doesn't add a little bit of attack. It is night and day compared to the previous sound. And I'm not hitting it any harder. I haven't changed my technique at all. Suddenly we have this whole other spectrum in every single hit. This means for us that this is gonna sit in the mix completely differently, whether you're playing live or in the studio. And if you're really struggling to hear the articulation of your kick in whatever context you're in, this is a solution for that. Costs, well, a quarter in a few minutes and suddenly you're in this whole other world which as long as we are paying attention to the life of our bass drum head is undoable just pull the patch off and we're back where we started Now we know that there are a lot of patches out there on the market that go from thin plastic to some kind of aramid fiber to metal discs and sandwiches of things. There's a whole world of that out there. We love DIY, we love, oh man, I need to make this happen right now and I can't go to Guitar Center or any other place to buy something. This is the solution there. And again, we also like to spend money only when we have to. <laughs> so if there's a way we can do it at home quickly, even just for experimental purposes, we're gonna go that route. 
This is a classic age old hack. We find it on metal records, thrash records, a lot of records from the eighties. I've seen it done, I've done it myself and the proof is in the sound. Now for fun, we're gonna break one of our own rules here and we're gonna do a comparison of the last groove with no production, totally dry, and then a little bit of mixing, a little bit of post on there so you can see how this could end up after a little bit of fussing after the fact. Now let's remove all of that post and go back to the dry sounds and do a comparison of the inside mic versus the outside mic. So it goes without saying that Putting these two components together is gonna to give us an opportunity to balance the sound out and get us something that gets the complete sound of the drum without having to make any concessions. We have one side of the sound on one side and the other on the other. We can do whatever we want with those. It's not dissimilar from how often a engineer or a sound person will mic both sides of the snare drum, get the wires in one mic and the batter in the other for the exact same reason, blending the two sides of the drum to get the perfect sound. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the long form back-to-back -back comparison. As we said at the beginning, these are all lovely sounds. They're wonderful, they're for different contexts. It depends on what you need on a certain day. You do have to make little adjustments along the way sometimes to get them perfect. We lucked out today and didn't have to change our tuning for any of these. But suffice to say that all the steps along the way to a final sound that you're trying to get should be cataloged for later because future events, future gigs, future days where you just want a different sound, you can call back to that and have a much larger catalog of options. It's worth noting that using two mics on a bass drum is starting to dip into production ideas and ideas about certain outcomes of a sound that you might be after. This is why we stick generally with a single microphone in the port because A, this gets us a nice balanced combination of tone and attack and the overall sound of the drum, and B, it's just simpler. It's a, it's a one mic instead of two mics. It's less things to worry about for us, and yeah, that's it. If you like what you saw today, please let us know in the comments, and more importantly, please follow the link below to the Patreon where there's going to be extended footage of many of our episodes along with exclusive content. It's the best way to help us continue to do this show. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for all future videos, and do tell us your stories about trying to get a punchy bass drum sound. Have you ever done the coin? Do you have a favorite coin? <laughs> Did you break your batter head in the process? We'd love to know.